Keeping a good and organized lab notebook is essential for ethical lab practices and becoming a scientist. There are a few simple rules that we ask you to follow and we'll be checking for on a regular basis, um, namely at the end of every experiment or the end of every day. General guidelines include that notebooks should be bound, not a loose leaf or spiral notebook. So we've asked you to purchase a composition notebook, um, you know, 50 cents to a dollar at the uh, at the grocery store should not be an onerous purchase. Um, you should always use blue or black ink. No crazy colors, no pencil especially. Um, we don't want to use pencil because that's easily erasable and we want our record to be a permanent record of what we've done, whether we've made mistakes or not. We ask you to write directly into the notebook. Do not transfer from other sources. So don't take a napkin to write down the masses from the balance and then transfer those numbers into your notebook. Make sure you bring your notebook with you and write directly into your notebook. You need to maintain a table of contents on the first few pages. Um, so set some space aside for this before you start writing in your notebook. You're gonna number all pages. There should be no missing or torn out pages. That's another um, consequence of having that bound notebook rather than a loose leaf notebook. If a page is missing, it should be obvious that there's a torn edge there or something. Um, and if pages are missing, that's, a, that's an eth ethical violation. All entries should be legible and organized. I know a lot of people have poor handwriting, and so this is really the time when you want to really try um, to make sure that other people can read your notebook. More importantly, that you can read your notebook and that it's organized well so that you can find what you need to find later. You should not have any obliterations or whiteout in your notebook. Since you are using pen and not pencil, if you make a mistake, you're going to use a single strike through through that mistake and you're going to initial the mistake and then write the correct thing. Um, date and initial all work. So at the end of every um, day, at the end of every page, you should be initialing every page and your lab partner should be initialing at the end of every experiment. So I can just show you some examples of these things. So first of all, you can see here we have um, a, a, an example of a table of contents. We've got a date column, a title for what was happening that day, and a page number. These could be literally every single page or they can be a page range. That's fine. Maybe you have experiment one, uh, what's it, uh, glassware, what is it good for? And then you have a range, you know, of pages that that covers and maybe a range of dates. That's fine. You don't have to label each one of these things. Um, you should include experimental diagrams, procedures, and measurements. So we're going to be asking you to do a lot of your pre-lab um, thinking and post-lab thinking in your notebook. So you'll be taking notes and you could be drawing diagrams. This is a great example of a diagram. Here we have a short summary of like what um, this student is going to be working on, what the experiment looks like. Um, again, the entry should be organized, clear, and readable. Um, if you are able to plan in advance what that data collection is going to look like, then you can make you know, a nice data table that has enough room for you to collect all your information. You'll notice this student actually thought of some other data that needed to be recorded, and so she wrote those in the side notes. Okay, here, some percent degradation, um, but they're still readable, okay, to anybody who needs to read them, and it's clear um, what is happening here. You should also include any prep and sample calculations. So if you need to prepare calculations before your lab to determine a concentration of a solution or anything like that, you can do those in your notebook. You should also keep a record of the equations and like a sample calculation for each thing that you do there. Again, page numbers should be at the uh, on every page, but it can be at the top or at the bottom, um, whatever you prefer. Um, everyone makes mistakes, but do not scribble them out in your lab notebook or use whiteout. Um, you should use a single line to strike through the error and then initial your changes. So here, um, this student uh, made some uh, wrong calculations and so she crossed out the wrong answer and put the correct 
uh, answer to the calculation there. Same thing here, just in writing. She, instead of writing the whole word out, she decided to um, abbreviate it, so she just used a single strike through um, to cancel that. Um, you should be initialing or signing the bottom of every page of each experiment uh, day, and then your lab partner should be signing just the last page of that experiment. Moving into the post lab, you should tape into your notebook any summary um, of ma manipulated data and plots. Um, and so here the student has made a plot, she's taped it in, and she's done um, an excellent job of putting a line across um, across the corner so that if that plot was moved or removed or um, changed, then you would know that something had um, changed because it wouldn't line up. And she also signed uh, the corner there to say that she was the person that included this plot. Uh, she took some notes on top of the plot and she's got really great um, plot practices here. Um, if you have large spaces that are not used, so maybe the end of an experiment, you're just finishing up your thoughts, you're finishing up a calculation, and you have a half a page that is empty and you intend to leave it empty, then you should put a whole strike through through that large space um, to indicate that you intended to leave it blank. You can see that she also did not follow what she wrote here, so she put a giant strike through through it, and then she signed that to say, yes, I intended to do that. Um, she's got summaries of observations, thoughts, and conclusions, how to move forward in this experiment. Um, and again, here's another example of an initial mistake that was struck through, um, corrected, and then she put her initials there to indicate that she corrected that herself.